Hi there, many thanks for joining us on the Sweet Spot Racing Post Weekly Golf Show with Bruce Millington and Steve Palmer. Just one tournament this week. It's the European Masters at Cron Sursier as the final scramble for places on Luke Donald's Ryder Cup playing to Italy intensifies indeed reaches its final act next monday donald will name his team and we'll know who's in and who's out before we look ahead to see who's going to dominate in the alps let's reflect on last week and victor hovland went into the tour championship on a high having won the bmw the week before and he maintained that incredible surge to win the tour championship at east lake by five shots from xander schofield interesting actually steve because that was the amount of shots he was giving Xander Schofle at the start. So sort of dead heat on the stroke play. But the money, the fortunes went to Victor Hovland. And what a couple of weeks he's had. His bank manager will be happy. What a player. What a man. Yeah, what a young man. Yeah, what a cool dude. He's the second youngest player in that field. Uh, only Tom Kim uh, younger than him in that tour championship lineup. But, you know, Hovland is an old head on young shoulders, isn't he? Because the, it, it wasn't over that early. The lead dwindled to three shots. I don't know if you were tuned in on Sunday night. Xander Schofele got the lead down to three shots. And, you know, a lot, a lot of players might have um, twitched in that scenario. But Hovland just steadied himself, kicked for the line. And as you say, won by five shots. So, yeah, he was a five to one winner for the Tour Championship and a 12 to one winner in that market. Well, 12 to one dead heat winner uh, in the, in the, in the, without the starting handicaps market. So, um, yeah. What I really liked about the tournament, Steve, was that although sometimes with this one, the guys who get the, the big start um, just go on and dominate and make full advantage. But by halfway, you virtually had forgotten that it was a handicap because it had yeah. a really open look to it, didn't it? And, you know, there's a lot of people had forced their way up there. I mean, that yeah. was mainly obviously due to Scotty Scheffler's continuing ineptitude with the flat stick and a, an unfortunate turn of events with your fancy Rory. Uh, that... <laughs> Yeah. I don't suppose you were the happiest person in Weymouth on Thursday when you saw him lumbering onto the first tee. <laughs> no, that was a tough moment when I saw him swinging with the power of Bruce Millington. I mean, mm. I, li I literally think you might have been able to outdrive him on, on day one. He was just chipping the drives down the fairway. And yeah, yeah it, was, it was horrifying, wasn't it? Particularly when you found out when the injury started. It, the injury started on the Monday when he was throwing Poppy into the swimming pool, you know, the family swimming pool. Uh, you know, not a problem many of us have, but McElroy was throwing Poppy into the, the family swimming pool at McElroy Towers, and he injured himself then. And he thought it would clear up by the time he got to the course. And then it was still there on the Wednesday when he got to the course. And he had his media conference on the Wednesday. And he didn't mention anything about the injury. And I, I, I think we have got to uh, we have got to be a bit cheesed off about that. Mm, uh, oh, definitely. Well, yeah, yeah, because because it's particularly because what was mentioned in the in the media conference was um yeah the the sort of lack of respect that some punters are having with players. Did you follow the Max Homer I did. story? Yes, I did. Yeah. And and John Rahm picked up on it, didn't he? He said every John... week there's people shouting stuff and they've had a bet, and and that really does anger me so much. If you're a punter and you you know we've we've had to learn to live with the ups and downs of golf punting. You don't start go there and start heckling. Oh, I backed you and you missed your part. Yeah. You suck and all that. Yeah. Grow up, you pathetic losers. Don't so, bet if you can't stand losing. Absolutely, absolutely. It's a hot topic, this. is a hot topic, and all the players are being asked about it. And, you know, the, the, obviously the, the punters have to show the players respect. They can't be t trying to distract the players. I mean, the Max Homer can't. one, the fella had $3 on Max Homer to miss the putt and start making a song and dance about it. But he was ejected from the BMW Championship, Good. rightly so. And, Good. you know, they, they are going to have to come down hard and all this. But, you know, that, 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 that punter to player respect, which we're looking for, has to go the other way as well, doesn't it? The, you know, yeah, we're all in bed together now, and the players have to show the punters some respect. No, I by, don't know. By, by, I don't... by informing us of their injuries, Bruce. Yeah, you know, there, there, there was no reason for McElroy not to mention that injury. And you know, you, you know, gambling's taking off in America now. And um, you know, as I say, I think we're all in bed together. We show the players respect. The players have to show the punters some respect. I, 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 I feel quite strongly about this. I'm, I'm not so sure about it. I think they've got quite enough to worry about. But I just, I just don't see why you wouldn't say you've got a bit of a back problem. Uh, yeah. You know, what, what, why wouldn't you if you're standing, standing up there and you know telling people what the latest state of play is and how you are and how your game is. Well, you know, if yes. you've got a crippling back problem, you, you, it's not just about telling punters, it's just about telling people, isn't it? But yeah, you're absolutely right. Probably That's thought a half an hour media conference. 
the amount of tosh that they cover in those media conferences, right. you know, the, 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 by far the most in, interesting and important thing he could have talked about is the fact that he was, you know, he, 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 he disabled for the for the for the opening round. And you know, I know he got progressively better, but it was too late, wasn't he? He was brilliant on Sunday. He shot sixty five on the Sunday when he was swinging like Rory McIlroy again, but it was too late by then. But yeah, yeah, I just I, yeah, I just feel like we need a little bit of uh, more communication because you know the PGA Tour making a big deal about gambling. They've got all sorts of features popping up here, there, and everywhere. Yeah, you know, gambling stateside is, is is going to be huge um so it needs the players to be more open about about injuries i'd say yeah i don't know i mean i I, th- I think they've got enough on their plate but yeah it was it was certainly unfortunate but fair play to hovland he goes into the Ryder cup in fantastic heart um just a quick word on scheffler because he must be absolutely the end of his tether mustn't he yeah, I mean, um, you know, he, as you say, he, he, you sort of forgot about the starting grid, didn't you, very, very quickly because the the, the fella in pole position played so badly. I mean, we, yeah, we 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 backed Tommy Fleetwood last week, didn't we, at sixty to one. Tommy Fleetwood ended up tied with the six to four favourite, Scotty Scheffler, but still no good to us because there was only five each way places. But uh, yeah, Scheffler, yeah, Scheffler is is, is said. He's, you won't see him for a while now. You won't. I have no idea. He might only play the the Hero World Challenge from here to the end of the year. I think he's just well Ryder Cup, of course. Ryder Cup and Hero World Challenge, I think, will be his schedule. I can't see him playing anything else. He's just he's just completely disenchanted with the game, isn't he? And you yeah. can understand it. You know, if you spend your whole life peppering pins all year, he's just be dancing around the pin, isn't he? But he can't get the ball in the hole. And um, yeah, really encouraging for the likes of us, isn't it, to see the best player in the world. Uh, three putting from six feet. He three putted from six feet on Sunday. He had a four putt um, on one green. Um, yeah, I, I find it quite heartwarming that the best player in the world can't get the ball in the hole. But uh, he, I mean, conversely, while he's putting is obviously the problem. You, you'd probably have to say that tee to green, he's produced one of the greatest years of, of golf you've ever seen, wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's Tiger Woods esque. Uh, the, yeah, the tee to green stats are amazing, but I can't help feeling that it, it's been a wasted season for Sheffer. And next year, you know, the, it, it, he's not going to play like that from tee to green. I feel, I feel he's going to, yeah, the, the, there's just, just, yeah, I just feel he's, he might have lost a bit of his love for the game in the last uh, in the last few months. So, um, uh, yeah, I could see Sheffer starting next year quite poorly and. Um, well, you never know. Down. We don't call him Scotty the Crocus Sheffler for nothing. He comes in, he blooms in spring, so maybe he'll do that again. Um, he does. So five to one winner Hovland in America, four hundred to one winner in the Czech Republic or Chechia as we should call it these days in the Czech oh. Masters. Todd Clements of all people, a uh, twenty-six year old Englishman, and he didn't just win one of those Mickey Mouse DP World Tour events. The, the Czech Masters had some elite operators at that level, didn't it? And uh, a fair old win. He beat Matt Wallace by one. Nikolai Hogard, your man, just couldn't get a blow. Tell us all about, well, I'll say all about Todd Clements. How much about him? Well, very little. I mean, he's he's a 27-year-old. I mean, he's, he's transformed his career. You know, he's 400 to one last week. You know, yeah, the, nobody expected anything from him last week. And, yeah, final around 63 um, six under par for the front nine. You know, it was it was it was heartbreaking to see um, how quickly things changed. I was I was quietly confident that Nikolai Hogar was going to win on Sunday, um, but the world number three hundred and ninety four has, has scuppered that. He had one top twenty finish on the hit, on the DP World Tour in his entire career before before Sunday's heroics. That was in the twenty twenty Open to Portugal. So uh, yeah, we're all a bit shocked, and um, yeah yeah one for the bookmakers for sure. It must be so hard for you, Steve. I mean, like you know, you spend so much time and effort learning about all the players and doing your previews and whittling down a shortlist, and then someone like Todd Clements comes on. I mean, you you can't. You, there, there isn't a way you can tip him, is there? Not denigrating no. him. I mean, he's a fair play. It's a fantastic win, but. You, you cannot have him on your mind before. An event no, like that, no, you? no, no. You're right. It is completely demoralised. And I was at a, bar- a barbecue on, <laughs> on, on Sunday and, um, you know, Mark, my friends were trying to sort of say, like, well, how do you how do you get him then? And I was just like, there is no way of getting him. No, there is no way of getting him. Just, there isn't. They're is going there? like, your job's impossible, isn't it? And I was just like, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Yes, but at yeah. times, it does feel impossible. Um, and yeah, did you bring I, the mood of the barbecue down, or did you, <laughs> or did you manage to stay reasonably socially buoyant? Uh, no, I think I did bring the mood of the barbecue down a little bit because I expected Nikola Hogard to win. And uh, he just putted so poorly. Every single day, Nikola Hogard missed short putts. He, he, you know, t- if, if, if they were you know, giving out the trophy for tee to green ability, then he would have won that. You know, he would have thrown the towel in. I so you said I'm... you were quietly confident. <laughs> it sounds like you're actually noisily confident at this barbecue, yeah? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then obviously the, the the lady folk didn't want to have the golf on in the in the in the lounge there. And um, yeah, yeah, it can be an antisocial business, can't it? Golf betting. Uh, it goes on for so long, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can yeah. imagine someone sort of one of I don't know one of the uh, one of the guests' wives saying, "Oh God, oh, what'd you do at the weekend, Lauren?" I went to this barbecue. It was all right, but this bloke watching the golf. He was insisting watching the golf and cheering on some bloke called Nikolai Hoga. And then when he didn't win, he was really grumpy. Honestly, it was <laughs> ruined the whole thing. I hope <laughs> You didn't do no, that, did you? People you have got used it. to it. People have got used to it. If they invite me to anything, they must realise that I might have a, an eye on the on the golf tournament that's happening. But um, now we live and learn. We live and learn. And Ludwig Aberg. Do you want to discuss Ludwig Aberg? Mm. I think we should. Um, yeah, I won't yeah, discuss it because I've got nothing to ask. But I can listen <laughs> to what you've got to say about him. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, Hogar and Aberg, without disrespecting Todd Clements, I mean, they're they're they're, they're different different gravy to to Todd. Um, you know, Nicola Hogar, we, 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 we must have a Ryder Cup conversation, I think. Yeah, we are going to. Yeah, are are you comfortable that. with that? You're comfortable? Oh, very much so, yeah. Um, so we'll have one of them later because it's not just the, um, you know, the American Ryder Cup team is finalised today. They get the, 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 mm. wild card, the wild cards are out today. It can't be. I mean, I'm, I'm going to say there's no real point preempting it because by the time we people listen to this, that we'll know. <laughs> but there's talk that that Justin Thomas is a lock for this team. You can't pick someone who's th- playing that badly, can you? P- particularly on the greens. I mean, we're talking about Scheffler putting badly, but, you know, when it comes yeah. down to clutch putts, that's what the Ryder Cup's all about sometimes, isn't it? And would you take him? I think that is the, the probably the most interesting conversation as part of the Ryder Cup conversation is the Justin Thomas one. Are we having the conversation now? So yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I think that I think that's the toughest decision on both sides, really, whether it's take Justin Thomas. I think it's between Justin Thomas and Sam Burns. Uh, and I think it will be who's bending Zach Johnson's ear the most because uh, he will be listening to the players. And Jordan Spieth will obviously want Justin oh, Thomas. Yeah. And Xander um, likes him, doesn't he? They're all buddies, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Justin Thomas is very popular in the team room. So uh, if Spieth is bending Zach Johnson's ear, then Justin Thomas will get the nod. But then, of course, Scotty Scheffler great friends with Sam Burns and um, he'll want Sam Burns on the team. So who's bending Zach Johnson's ear the furthest? Mm. Will it be Scotty or will it be uh, Jordan Spieth? Um, but I think the rest of the team sort of picks itself on the American side. Yeah, you've got your Kepka's going to play Spieth, Morikawa, Fowler, I think will be back. And then Cameron Young is very popular with Zach Johnson. I think he, he'll be playing as well. So I think it's, yeah, the only discussion there is Thomas or Burns. And is there anyone else who, who would be hard done by to be left out? I mean, I'm not entirely sure, for instance. that There's going to um, be some tears from Keegan Bradley, isn't there? Keegan Bradley's going to, hopefully he doesn't um, get too worked up and make some uh, you know, poor comments. There's going to be angry people all over the show, isn't there? Um, but it, it's a time for dignity. Mm, absolutely. absolutely. And on the European side, and by the way, latest betting, four to six USA, six to four Europe, 12 to one the tie. Uh, in terms of Europe, is it, have you formulated any fresh thoughts on who you think will be in and who won't? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we've got one more week to go, haven't we? And, uh, you know, all eyes are on Bobby McIntyre, as you like to call him. Um, well, seeing whether calls he can, him that, don't uh, they? Yeah, yeah, everyone calls him that. Seeing whether he can hold on. Now, if he holds on to his, his third spot in the in the European points list, then... Um, yeah. And then the other one, of course, is Fitzpatrick. You know, Matt Fitzpatrick's playing this week, so... He's trying to get an automatic spot, which will knock Tommy Fleetwood out of the uh, the world points list. No, but so, they'll uh, get, they'll get, they'll both get wild cards. I don't know why <laughs> Fli- Fitzpatrick's bothering. I mean, he can't not be in it, can he? No, no, no. I think he just loves the golf tournament. He's a two time winner here. I think he's just coming for, for for trophy rather than Ryder Cup. Yeah, they'll both be in it. Yeah, I, I think, I think, yeah. Who's I mean, the I most obscure it. name who will be in it? Do you think? Um, Yannick Paul. Uh, I don't think Yannick Paul. I don't think Yannick Paul's got any hope of getting a, a wild card pick, so he needs to qualify this week. There's five players who can catch Bobby McIntyre and um, and, and take McIntyre out of the team, uh, but I suspect McIntyre will hold on to that. Uh, I think Luke Donald will go with Adrian Moronk and Nikolai Hogar, who are both course winners at uh, the Marco Simone. So, uh, so if if McIntyre qualifies, you'll have the last three winners at the Marco Simone in the team. I think that would be a a significant thing to be able to say, you know, you got, mm. um, you know, that will give you a huge course edge over, you know, going to a track where the Americans, are, you know, have not seen it. So um, I'm hoping that he goes for that policy because I think Adrian Baronk deserves to be on the team. I think Nikolai Hoga is, is is better than, than many people realise and, 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 you know, have the course winners on the team. And then I think he'll get his experience from Rose, the fine young man, Justin Rose, Shane Lowry, 
and um, Fitzpatrick or Fleet, which whichever one doesn't qualify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and then Aberg, Aberg is is the wildest wild card. So um, I, cool. I, I I um I expect to see Aberg picked as well. So you're getting very excited about. It. I haven't known you this <laughs> animate. You normally like you shut down all conversation about the Ryder Cup until two days before. So. Yeah, Good, a month I'm away now. We're, we're, we're a month away, and um, mm, yeah, because we got the Solheim Cup the week before as well, haven't we? So, and that's closer. I think uh, Europe at ten to eleven, USA eleven to ten for that. So two incredible weeks coming up. That'll be really good, won't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. We have to, <laughs> we have to have Ryder Cup conversations um, when there's only one golf tournament, don't we? Well, let's do that golf tournament. It's the Omega European Masters at beautiful Cron Sur Sierre, and as Steve said. Matt Fitzpatrick is playing, not just playing, he's favourite. Here are some indicative prices. Fitzpatrick currently 8-1. to one. Ludwig Aberg is 16. Adrian Moronk and Nikolai Hogard 18. Alexander Bjork and Matt Wallace are 22. Bobby McIntyre 25. Antoine Rosner 28. Jordan Smith 30. Rasmus Hogard 30. Adrian Dumont de Chassard 33. Yannick Paul 33. And it's 35 bar. So it's that beautiful course up in the mountains. Tell us more. Kranzer Thier Golf Club, Kranz, Montana, Switzerland, 6,808 yards, par 70, only three par fives. There's been a tour event staged at Kranz every year since 1972, apart from 2020 COVID cancellation. There was a redesign of this track in 1999 by Thierry Bath He made it tougher, created lots of runoff areas around the greens. We've got the sixth and the seventh fascinating golf holes. Love watching them. Drivable par fours, but obviously tight tree line track. This so there, yeah, it's not often you get a drivable par four that, that there's so much danger around. So um, if you fancy taking the risk, have a blast there. Uh, undulating fairways as well. Greens are small, unreceptive. It's a short, fiddly assignment. This, um, you know, you want accuracy from T to green, course management. You know, look, look at the honours board. Loads of tidy operators on the honours board. You know, Miguel Angel Jimenez. Thomas Bjorn is a two-time champion. Richie Ramsey, Matt Fitzpatrick, two-time champion. That's the sort of guys you want to be following. Sonny and Calm all week. How many runners? 156. <laughs> okay. I'm oh, talking of COVID. How are you? Dramatic how, did that, pause, how, did that, how did that progress, your COVID? I tell you what, I don't like to sound like a you know, a, a wimpy boy, um, but they, they, it's taken me about. A, well, I'm still not over it entirely. Yeah, really? it's, it's, oh, yeah, yeah, it's still not over. Yeah, you got oh, a no. fly tracking you. You could be in big trouble if there's something no, I'm okay. contained within that fly. Seems a fairly passive insect, so I'm not. I'm not concerned at this stage. I'm not going to start gesticulating while you're trying to talk. No, no, no. You got to be How careful. Many... With the, what's your policy on wasps? Sorry, we've only got one wasps. golf tour. We can just go. Yeah. <laughs> I got a um my uh, my wife's my wife's best friend's mum um got an astonishing policy where she, where she talks to them and I, I was I was exposed to it the other day and she she talks calmly and um, enthusiastically oh, to really? the wasp. What sort of thing yeah, would she say? She would say, uh, "Oh, hello there, Mr. Wasp. <laughs> um, would you mind leaving us alone today because really? we uh, we don't really fancy uh, getting stung today." Oh, and uh, yeah, 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 it's incredible. She gets scenes. stung on the eyelids. <laughs> So she claims she's never been so and to be fair these wasps did seem to respond to her maybe she's got some special supernatural powers or something but wow they, yeah, yeah my, i normally do the opposite it's like yeah yeah flailing, yeah, yeah. flailing and, um, away yeah, as if there's a fire yeah yes and i've been I've stung many times horse whisperers but never a wasp whisperer that's yeah. interesting i'll introduce oh. you to if you wish i um, i start off staying calm and and they do tend to bugger off at that point but if, if they continue to plague me i'd then just like swear at them and yeah. then we'll start giving it oh yeah but I'd if they, if they, i i just swatted one into between my toes once one of the worst decisions i went like that and it went straight in between my toes and stomach but um yeah it's a dangerous world isn't it it certainly is um right then how many selections i have got five selections for this one golf tournament of the week situation okay who is the most likely winner, do you think, of the Omega European Masters? I think it's Antoine Rosner, uh, who can be backed at 33 to 1 as, as we live and breathe. Yeah, he fits the bill for Cranthurthia, relentlessly accurate from tee to green, strong ball striker. He fell in love with this place on his Kranz debut in, in 2021. He closed with a round of 62 to finish 13th. Then on his return last year, he finished 4th. And again, it was a late gallop. You have 65, 64, 66 after a slow start. I think this time now he's got that bank of course experience. 
it's reasonable to expect him to be quicker from the starting gate. So 13th and 4th with slow starts. This time, I think he's going to be in on the leaderboard throughout because he's playing nicely. He'd be proud of the way he played in the Open Championship at Royal Liverpool. Finished 20th there. Returned to action last week, 22nd in the Czech Masters. Yeah, I think Rosner comes with a tee to green guarantee this week. It's just whether we can get some putts out of him and, and, and then he take the trophy. We've got courage. Don't, don't worry about Rosner with, with courage. He's a three-time DP World Tour champion. He was a rookie in 2020, so he, he's got those trophies quite quickly. He was a two-time winner on the Challenge Tour too. So, uh, yeah, Antoine Rosner rocks on each way investment. Does a win get him into the Ryder Cup picture or is it all too late? No, no, no. I think um, that my two main tips this week have been on the fringes of the conversation, as we like to call it. Uh, and even if they won, I don't think it would be enough. Oh, right. I should be able to work out the other one then. Let's have a look. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, they, yeah, that it's certainly uh, not enough to qualify automatically. And uh, yeah, I think they've left it too little too late. When, I mean, we're not actually going to get a Frenchman on the, on the team. Um, I know you like to travel to the to, to France occasionally for a holiday and you're going to have some disappointed people around you because we're not going to get any Frenchman on the team. Um, OK, but, well, I reckon you're going for Alexander Bjork then. Am I right? I reckon you're absolutely right. Yeah. And um, tell I'll, us why. I will pat you firmly on the back for that next time I see you. Uh, well, he's enjoying one of the most consistent when campaigns. When am I going to see you? Are, we, are you fit to play golf, by the way? Or are you still got gout? I've got lots of issues with my toes, but I mean, I could, I could, yeah, I could battle through the pain barrier taking loads okay. of pills. I could, I'm, I'm happy to take loads of pills for for that. I mean, Tom you, Sigal, have to, you have to line backwards. up your day of golf about three months in advance. Don't you? <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. Due to but, a complex uh, childcare situation. <laughs> yes, but the um, my son starts school next week. Uh, oh, they grow up so quickly, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, 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 so, he's, so that'll free up a little bit of time. Oh, good. OK. Well, yeah, yeah I'll pat you on the back for guessing Alexander Bjork at 25 to 1. Um, yeah, I, I say one of the most consistent campaigns of his career. It probably is the most consistent campaign of his career. 11 top 20s, 7 top 10s, 4 top 5s. He was runner-up in the Raz al Championship in February. Um, still only got one win to his name on the DP World Tour, the 2018 China Open. But in terms of who's the most likely to feature on the leaderboard this week, I think you could easily make a case for that being Bjork. I think he's a surefire contender. You know, so have an each way bet. Take your chance that he can he can um, you know deliver an overdue second trophy. You know, Kran's ideal lack of length is the only weakness that uh, Bjork has. Not a serious handicap at Kranz. He's accurate, great scrambler, magnificent putter. He was 16th on his debut in 2017 as a rookie maiden. In 2018, he had form figures of miscut, 48 miscut, miscut when he arrived at this golf tournament. But open with a rock solid 69, got overnight food poisoning at him. Oh. Subsequent Kranz results, 28, 13, 16. So rock solid, rock solid uh, record. Uh, last week, he's on a holy unsuitable layout in Prague. Yeah, they're chalk and cheese, these two these two courses from last week to this. But he still had three good rounds and finished 14th in the tournament. So, yeah. Each way, nice Rosner, York, you won't be failing. OK. What's that gesture? I don't know. I just fancy... <laughs> I think I'm just saying, yeah, go on, go on, go on. Sort of thing. Yeah. Oh, OK, fine. Yeah. Right then, who's the third tip? Marcus Kinholt. 66 to 1. There have been six Swedish winners at Kran Thurthier. I'll have Bjork and Kinolt on my team to bolster that statistic. Kinolt also stuck on just one DP World Tour, Tour title, but he's you know, six years younger. He's had some health issues which sidelined him for a bit. So lots of good excuses for Kinholt. I think he'll add to his trophy cabinet soon enough. Kran's great opportunity. Yeah, another neat and tidy golfer, efficient on around the greens. He was 10th on his Kran's debut in 2015. He's only 27 now, so you well, do the math. Very young. If you do the math on my ticks on how, how old young is he? he was. He's 27 now, and he was. He was ten... He's only 27. Yeah, he, he was, he was, he's the baby faced assassin, wasn't he? He, he, he mm. came onto the scene, he, he, he literally looked like a baby and uh, still does in many ways. Um, but yeah, he was he was 19, I believe, when he. I didn't want to put you under pressure with the math there. He was 19. No, no, I did he get that. 19, 19, Kranz debut. His full Kranz results 10, 56, 12, 47, 23. Solid. And his form figures from his last three starts equally solid 14th, 20th, 12th. Two of those results came in the States. You know, Barbasol Championship, Barracuda. So Kinnell, fit and firing again. Great bet. Jolly good. Next up, another 66 to 1 chance as we live and breathe, Ewan Ferguson. 
who started the year on the Ryder Cup radar. He played in the Hero Cup for, for GB and I. I think the Ryder Cup dreams faded away for now, but we shouldn't forget how good he is. I think this fella is pure class. I, I, his, his swing is, is, is beautiful. He's, he, he's, he's typically very accurate with a textbook swing. He's a two-time DP World Tour champion. He's, he's only 27, and he's played loads of great golf in the last six months. He was third in the STC Championship, fourth in the Johnson Workwear, eighth in the KLM Open, fourth in the British Masters, 12th in the Scottish Open. No disgrace in missing the cut in the Open on his major debut. Uh, he was playing practice rounds with Ricky Fowler. It was a very intense week for, for Ferguson. This week in this grade, well capable of, of being a big player. He missed the cut at Crans last year on his debut by shot. Now he knows the course. Uh, I fancy Ferguson to play really well. Nice one. And who's our fifth tip? It is a, a fellow that opened up at 500 to one this week. There's a couple of shrewdies that have, have, have taken the 500 to one. He's 400 to one now. Uh, another Glasgow Rangers fan. Ewan Ferguson is a big Glasgow Rangers fan. We've got another one here and it's Mark Warren. Uh, I think it's going to be a big week for Gers fans. Um, I couldn't <laughs> believe what I was seeing when I saw the 500 to one. I mean, this is a class act on his day. He's a four-time DP World Tour champion. The last of those victories came across the Swiss border in the in the Austrian Open. Warren's last Challenge Tour win came in Switzerland in the Rolex Trophy, uh, maybe at the age of 42. Still a young man in relative terms. Yeah, Mark Warren at 42, still got loads of ability and loads of Kranz experience to draw upon. I mean, this is a quirky track. You need to learn Kranz Thurthier. Uh, Mark Warren has. He made his debut in 2002 uh, um, and then he finished fourth in his second appearance in 2006. He was ninth in 2010. That was his best result of the whole year. He was 13th in 2014. And there's just been little hints lately that the old Mark Warren is back. His last three regulation DP World Tour starts, fourth in the Made in Himmerland. 20th in the uh, the ISPS Hand of World Invitational. And last week, 31st, 31st in the Czech Masters, closed with a 67. So there's no way he's a 500 to one chance in this grade. It's a very exciting bet. Wow. I bet. love that. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's it. Bet, better with a bet on it. You can't it? really sort of abbreviate bet, can you? <laughs> it's better with a bet on Come on, let's campaign for betting. Under fire betting. It's it is my, under fire, isn't it? Doing doing my I tweeted yesterday that was I was reading in the Times. It said that one in three people want gambling banned. I mean, come on! If you don't like bet, if you don't bet, don't bet. No one's forcing you. Uh, no one with a William Hill tabard is getting you out of bed with a gun and saying, "Come, get down to our betting shop and have a bet." You don't have yeah. to have a bet, but don't stop our fun. All right? Yes, there are some problem gamblers, and we need to do everything that we can to protect them. But we are doing that now. Yeah. You know, vulnerable gamblers have never had more help and more messaging about the dangers of it. So please just let those of us who like to have a bet, just get on with it, okay? Because yeah. we're sick of it, aren't we? We're absolutely sick. You don't need to ban everything you don't like, is it? Oh, exactly. That seems to be the way the world's going now. If, if, <sighs> if, if the powers that be don't like something, oh, we'll ban that, we'll ban this, we'll cancel this, we'll cancel that. You know, just... Give people freedom to do what they ruddy well want. We're all grown adults, aren't we? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Good. I'm glad we got that off our chests. Um, let's yeah. talk about Matt Fitzpatrick. I must admit, Steve, when I looked at the first show and saw that he was running about 17 to 2, I thought, well, that's eight and a half to one. If you played this tournament eight times, I'd, I'd fancy Fitzpatrick to win one of them. So tell me why I shouldn't be backing him. He's had a long time on the road stateside, hasn't he? Yeah, you know, he played in all the FedEx Cup playoff events and, um, you know, you know, long trek over from, from Georgia. And as you very well say, uh, he knows he's on the Ryder Cup team. So I just think, yeah, I think motivation, you know, he might be a bit lethargic at the start and um, I just don't want any negatives. And he was very wild last week with his irons. You know, he was spraying his irons all over the was place he? at oh, the World Championship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can easily resist him at, uh, at single figure odds. Um, okay, mate. Yeah, Jolly yeah, good. Yeah. Anyone else you want to discuss? Or anything well, you want to discuss? Well, <laughs> 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 There's two of my favourite players are playing, obviously, you know, Nikolai Hogar and Ludwig Ebo. They're both playing, but I just don't think this is the track for them. You know, it's all about precision, course management and, and patience. Um, neither of those guys 
uh, yeah, these are these are young bucks, you know, young bucks. I prefer grinders. Let's get the grinders on board. This okay. Way. And Steve, just um, talking about courses, uh, obviously, you know, not everybody will will be absolutely completely au fait with the vagaries of Marco Simone. What sort of a player does that suit? Because I mean, there's water over the rough. I, I saw a video of the ball disappearing into what didn't look that deep rough last week. So are we talking tight accurate or, or is it, do you need a bit of power as well? <coughs> well, they, all, all the talk is that uh, the European tour big wigs are going to tighten it up and, and anti-American. I never really understand when they talk about this because it's not like the, the Europeans are you know, a load of Richard Blands. You know, we're not um, <laughs> we've got some quite handy hitters ourselves. You know, if they're anti an American in it, that's a handful. Um, that's a gobble, a gobble fall. Um, and yeah, Rory Mackerel won't like that, will he? Victor Ovlin won't like that. I mean, yeah. I, I, Big I don't Johnny Rahm. Big Johnny Rahm won't like that. There's lots of talk about what they're going to do to the track. But when it was played in the in the Italian Open, you know, it's a, a massive ball strikers track. Yeah, you know, your winners were Adrian Moronk, Nikolai Hogar, and Robert McIntyre. You know, aggressive players. You know, a, a good drivers. So it suited, you know, bold drivers. Um, but then, yeah, if they trick it up and you know put patches of rough all around the middle of the fairway. It's very doubtful. Now. I've never seen that. <laughs> OK, good. Well, we'll, they're we'll allowed to do what they like. I mean, yeah. they, if, 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 yeah, say, say, for example, you said you wanted to talk about it, didn't you? Say, yeah. for example, like Europe had like the worst team in the history of the golf and they were like 50 to one to win. They'd be perfectly within their rights to put like a windmill on each hole and turn it That'd into complete farts, isn't it? Yeah. I wonder if that'll ever happen in our lifetimes. When you worked at the crazy golf course, did they have a windmill there? Uh, no, that was a traditional. A traditional oh, that was a, put, a grass putting green. Putting green, yeah. It still, still is in operation. It breaks my heart when I drive past it and see how it's fallen into disrepair. Yeah, they don't is look it? after it like don't I do. I used to give it a watering every night. And, um, <laughs> it, it, yeah, it, it was pristine, but now it's all like tufts of long. It's like putting on every rough sometimes. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, no. They, 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 should, they shouldn't have let me go. I'd probably still be there now if they hadn't let me go. Uh, you'd have been happy, I reckon, don't you? you put, yeah, probably. Yeah, a lot less, lot less stressed. <laughs> oh, well. Good. Well, hopefully your tips won't cause you too much stress this week <clears throat> and they'll play well. And they are? Antoine Rosner, Alexander Bjork. Marcus Kinholt, Ewan Ferguson and Mark Warren. Lovely stuff. Oh, how remiss of me. I haven't checked my running order, so I don't know what we've got next week. Can you help me? Irish Open. Irish oh, Open. Wow. Yeah. Where's that this week? Yeah, this, slot, uh, this K Club, I believe. K oh, Club. lovely. I've played, I've played there thrice, believe it or not. Have you? Yeah, I've played there once. Um, lovely, but, uh, yeah, I think Rory McIlroy is intending to play in that. Um, Marvellous. He's back, he's back to fitness, isn't he? So, yeah, yeah, lots to look forward to. And, uh, yeah, we will we will harden our Ryder Cup conversation as, as the weeks go on. And um, I know how much you look forward to that golf tournament. Very much so. Brilliant. OK, Steve, thank you very much indeed for that. Good luck with your tips this week. Thanks, as always, to our brilliant producer, Will Carey. And most of all, as ever, thank you so much for watching The Sweet Spot. Don't forget, if you enjoy the show, please like, comment, subscribe and share. Let us know who you fancy hit that thumbs up button and join us next Tuesday for another sweet spot. <laughs>